Hello friends, let's get right down to business um, update I have to share with you for this video is that the trade predictor has been taken down. I, I took it down. I'm saying it has been taken down as if somebody else did it. I did it. I took it down. Uh, you will no longer find trade predictor online. Uh, the web app is, is gone. There is no longer web, uh, a web app. But it doesn't mean that trade predictor stops existing. It just means that it's no longer a web app. Uh, I don't, I love JavaScript. I think it's a really beautiful language, but I see some really big problems with the trade predictor, with especially security wise, I see some really big problems with this application. So I decided to change the format. I decided to change uh, the way it works a little bit, but the content is still going to be the same. The content is going to be 100% identical to what you saw uh, with the web app. The only difference is the way the calculation is done. The only difference is the way sort of it's coded on, but the content is still going to be the same. So on my trade predictor website, you will now find the parent imputator, which free tool, you can use it. Um, but the actual trade predictor has migrated to the itch page. As you can see on the itch page, I'm no, I'm no longer selling passwords. Instead, I'm selling this executable, this application. Uh, let me show you what this executable is and how it works, what it does. Um, so that you have a familiarity with what you're going to buy if you're going to buy my trade predictor. It is still $12. Uh, as I make more updates, as I make it better, the price will grow. I'm, I've said this, said this a long time ago. Let's say it again. The price is going to grow as I keep adding more functions, more, more functionalities to my application. Let's go ahead and see uh, what you're actually going to get for this executable file, which costs $12. So as a developer here, I get to... The, I get to download the file like this straight from the page. So I'm showing you what you're going to get if you download it. And it says suspicious download blocked. So what you want to do is you want to download the suspicious file. It's going to say that if you have an antivirus, it's going to say that for every file you download. So when you start it, you're going to see something like this, more info run anyway. It's going to say that. Of course it will. And now we enter a file name and this is how it works. So you want to make sure that you're downloading it to the same folder where you have your data file. If you have your data file in the debug folder, you want to make sure that your uh, application is also in the same folder as the file you want to analyze. Um, if your application is in this folder, for example, but my uh, but my my heritage road data, data, data file is in the new downloads folder, it's not going to work. Even though it is technically in the directory, it's in a different branch of the directory. It has to be in the same exact branch of the same exact directory. So I can use, I can, if it's in this folder and I can see it on the screen right now, then it's going to work. Any of these files that you can see on the screen right now, it's going to work. So let's go ahead and try my friend, um, Ancestry DNA. We're going to copy that. We're going to put the name here, .txt. You want to make sure that you include the format after the file name. So it's ancestrydna.txt if it's a text file if it's a my heritage file it's going to be a csv comma separated values format file you want to make sure you enter the file name and the format after the file name nothing else you don't enter anything else just the file name and the format so now it's going to run and it's going to um it, it's going to go and look for the file it might take like three or four minutes. And after it's done, let me show you. The way you know that it's done is it's going to say this. It's going to say this individual's Y-DNA is such and such and such. It's going to find your Y-DNA. And it's going to say the file has been created successfully. The file in this case is answerdna.txt.html. It's an HTML file. It will generate a web page for you. And uh, it may be difficult for you to find the web page if you have a, a folder that's just really big. But the web page, if... If you make a small folder, make a tiny little folder with just your file or just as many raw DNA files as you want to analyze and nothing else so that, would be e it, so that it would be easier for you. Oh, so that it would be easier for you to find the generated web page. In this case, it may be kind of difficult for you to find the web page because there's so many files, but I can see it at the end here, ancestrydna.txt, and it's an HTML document. So let's click on it and you will see uh, something that is exactly identical to what you would see with uh, Trade Predictor. Something completely the same as what you'd see with Trade Predictor on the web app, except this time it's not a web app. This time it's a um, it's it's something else. 
something else. But it does generate a result page for this everything that's it's 100% identical. The the content is 100% identical to what you would see with uh, the web app. 100% the same thing. So yep, that's pretty much all there is to it. You can check the polygenic risks course. Everything is gonna look 100% identical to how it looks on the web application. Um, is there some differences? Yeah, there's a couple of differences. Like for example, Nashakot, my web application used to display, um, it used to display like a little, well, gradient, I guess, from blue to whatever the darkest eye color you could have. So it's a gradient that represent, represents your possible eye colors. In this case, uh, this application doesn't really do that, but I can make it do that. I can definitely make it display the gradient for you if you want me to. Uh, for hair color, it does pretty much the same result. You will get pretty much the same result as what you would get uh, with a with the web version. For hair shape, the same thing. Uh, there is a list of SNPs that my national code looks for. It's a really big list. And most of these SNPs contribute to eye color and hair color and skin color or multiple traits, not just one trait. Let's go ahead and check the Oka Tunherk 2 eye color calculator results. So that's not for me, that's for my friend. But, you know, I'm just showing you that this will have everything that the um, the web app had. And there's an ethnic calculator results too. And this will have, once again, everything that the web application had. Everything that was in the web application is going to be here in this in this file. And you can actually just send the file. You can send the file to somebody by Discord, by email, whatever. You can send the file and they will be able to see the entirety of your results. It's really easy to share. Thanks for watching. Buy my tool. Goodbye.